Humans utilize various chemical substances and products within their households and industries that are dangerous for the environment and the humans themselves. A hazardous waste can be corrosive, explosive, flammable or toxic in nature. If a waste falls into the hazardous waste category, it is crucial to segregate it from wet and dry waste. In fact, the further stages like the transportation, storage, stabilization and disposal also requires expertise as mishandling of the hazardous waste can pose risk to the well-being of human and the environment. Therefore, to manage hazardous waste, Standard operating protocols have been notified by the CPCB in different waste categories for treatment storage and disposal facilities, common biomedical waste management facilities and rubber waste processing units. The respective state pollution control boards and the pollution control committees grants this authorization for hazardous waste management. In this video, we will discuss the process of authorization as well as the renewal process. Hello and welcome to Enterclimate. My name is Shalin. Let's start by understanding the rules that governs the hazardous waste management in India. So, the hazardous waste management, handling and transboundary movement rules were notified in 2016, which is the presently applicable rules under which hazardous waste authorization and the renewal is given. These rules emphasize on the accountability of every business involved in activities such as collection, storage, packaging, transportation, processing, recycling, recovery, pre and co-processing as well as transfer and disposal of hazardous waste. Now, one should note that hazardous waste produced by industries and activities such as mining, e-waste recycling sector, rubber waste recycling businesses have been distinctly addressed under the hazardous waste rules. Furthermore, the waste from hospitals and healthcare facilities can be categorized as solid waste, biomedical waste and hazardous waste depending on the chemical composition of the waste. In addition to it, these rules also govern the units that does the handling, disposal and requires permission for the transboundary movement of hazardous waste. After the amendment in 2022, Schedule 9 was added to the rules introducing the Extended Producer Responsibility or EPR to waste tires. The tire producers and tire waste recycling businesses are now governed by these rules and they are now required to fulfill EPR obligations. The covered entities includes the waste tires manufacturers, importers and brand owners as well as retraders. Now taking this discussion further, let's understand which category of businesses require hazardous waste management authorization. So this list can include the industries and units generating, collecting, receiving, storing, transporting, treating, disposing or handling hazardous or other kinds of waste, laboratories and service stations for vehicles that use hazardous substances and have a regular hazardous waste generation like spent chemicals and solvents, chemicals or oil contaminants, filters or cloths, chemicals, oil bearing residues, etc. Those units, go-downs and warehouses that stores hazardous waste substances such as pesticides, medicines, etc. and have regular generation of contaminated or discarded of specification materials. Units engaged in recycling or reprocessing of hazardous and other waste. Units that provide services for reception, collection, storage, transportation, treatment and disposal of tire waste, biomedical waste or other hazardous waste. Now, for businesses that fall under this list that was just mentioned, the hazardous waste authorization and the renewal process. So, the process of hazardous waste authorization involves the following steps. Applying to the State Pollution Control Board or the Pollution Control Committee in Form 1 of the Hazardous Waste Management Rules, this application must be accompanied with the consent to establish and consent to operate documents. In addition to this, the applicant must ensure that all the required documents are attached with the application and authorized individual should also sign these documents. Thereafter, the applicants must submit the completed application form and the supporting documents to the appropriate state pollution control boards or the pollution control committee through their online consent management and monitoring portal. Once the board reviews the submitted form and documents, the authorization will be granted if they meet the required criteria. Now, talking about the documents that will be required at the time of authorization and renewal. So, the necessary documents will include a covering requisition letter showing the status of the industry and the activities, details of any changes in the quality of trade effluent or sewage generated and the disposal method indicated against 
in the consent order if applicable details of production capacity and actual product manufactured if applicable in month wise manner during the last two financial years the details of changes if any in the emission quantity and the number and height of chimney stacks indicated against in the original consent order if applicable the latest analysis report of the treated trade effluent or the sewage samples if applicable the details of changes in the name or in the management or the board of directors the latest analysis report of the aaq stack monitoring and noise levels if applicable the compliance report on the latest consent or renewal of cto order conditions stipulated under the air and the water acts the compliance report on the conditions of latest hazardous waste authorization biomedical waste authorization if issued the latest audited balance sheet or auditor's certificate showing current assets fixed assets and current liabilities and the details of the last bill if applicable the details and the mode of payment of the consent fee under the air and the water act the complete details of the systems for the zld and the details of land in case of on land disposal and the photographs if applicable now the process of hazardous waste authorization and its renewal is a well organized and a crucial element to ensure the careful handling of hazardous waste materials by following prescribed guidelines such as the timely submission of applications furnishing essential documentation and adhering to the regulations set forth by the spcbs the businesses and organizations can seamlessly continue to operate while keeping strong focus on the environmental safety this is where endoclimate can help you with your hazardous waste management authorization and the online consent management contact our experts from the details if you are interested in any of the services mentioned in the video so that was all for today's video thank you for watching